I recently made a ball-shaped Omni wheel and then made three of them and attached them to an omnidirectional robot which can move in three axes and mix the axes together so that it can move in both translation and rotation at the same time. This worked out pretty well, even driving over some obstacles, and I'll be revisiting this type of wheel for another build in the future. Each ball-shaped wheel has a main driven axle, and also a perpendicular axle with two hemispheres and an idler wheel mounted. The two hemispheres and wheel are currently passive, they're just mounted on bearings so they spin freely. This is very similar to standard omnidirectional wheels, and provided there are at least three wheels on the robot we can still just power the main axle and move in any direction. There were some suggestions in the comments that we could power these hemispheres as well to make a one or two wheel balancing robot. This would be possible, although we'd have to vary the speed of each of the hemispheres as the main axle rotates. This is because the effective circumference of each wheel touching the ground changes, as the contact point with the ground changes, as the wheel rotates about its main axis. However, we can use this to our advantage by using this mechanism in reverse, and using it to make a continuously variable reduction. There are various examples of continuously variable transmissions, and some are used in real vehicles. Often these consist of belts on pulleys that can change diameter, and some even have arrangements of balls between two plates. So today I'm going to make a really simple example of a ball-based continuously variable transmission that we can use for something practical. My plan is to use one hemisphere on a pivot running between two wheels. One wheel will be powered and the other is the output. As the hemisphere pivots, the circumference of the hemisphere that runs on each wheel will change to give us a variable reduction. I'm going to use my version 2 cycloidal drive reducer to drive the input since that has plenty of power, and I'm going to drive two outputs, each with their own variable reducer. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. The hemispheres are made of TPU and those have a rigid core which has some bearings mounted, so we have the flexible part on the outside and something rigid for it to run on on the inside with two 8mm internal diameter bearings mounted. There are two of those, one is yellow and one is blue, and both of those spin freely on the two skate bearings which are mounted on there, and those are mounted on 8mm steel shaft. I've got two pivot blocks which those are mounted on, and that allows the whole assembly to pivot and the hemisphere to still rotate freely. Each hemisphere is actually slightly less than half a sphere, but the pivot point that the whole thing pivots on is in the middle of where it would be if it were a ball. I found my cycloidal drive version 2, which is exactly how it was since I tested it with the skateboard and you can check that video out in my channel. That's mounted onto a plate that we can mount the whole mechanism on, and we've got a wheel on there with another TPU tyre, which is the white part around the outside of the yellow. The black plate holds two other orange mounts, and those hold the two pivots holding the hemispheres on each side. And we've got just enough friction there that we can disengage them and engage them, and run those hemispheres at different speeds as we adjust the angle. I've slowed down the motor so we can see what happens, but you can see as I tilt the hemisphere onto the smaller circumference rubbing on the wheel, then the screws go round faster, and if we tilt it back then it goes much slower, even though the cycloidal drive and its output wheel are both spinning at exactly the same speed. So all we need now is the output that's actually going to end up being the wheels of a robot, and again I've got a TPU tyre on a wheel with some skate bearings fixed in the middle. And these fit on either side, We'll come back to how they freewheel in a moment, but let's just put a mark on the wheel so we can see how fast they go. With the motor running, we can see that we now have a continuously variable reduction as I tilt the hemisphere. If I tilt it so the larger circumference is rubbing against the output wheel, that means the smaller circumference is running against the cycloidal drive wheel, and that's gearing us up to give us a faster wheel on the output. And of course if I move it back the other way, then the smaller circumference is running on the output wheel and the bigger circumference running on the cycloidal drive output, so that gears us down so that we can run the wheel slower. And of course we've got a dead spot in the middle where it's declutched even though the motor is still running, and that's there because we've got a hole in the bottom of the wheel which essentially gives us a dead spot. 
As you can probably tell by now, I'm planning to make this into a two-wheel robot that I can drive with servos pulling the clutches and continuously variable transmissions. However, there's one slight flaw in the plan, which is that the wheels will only ever go in opposite directions, and that means that the robot will always spin on the spot and will never be able to drive in a straight line. The fix is pretty easy though, and that's to complete the sphere by adding another hemisphere so we have a complete ball which runs between the two wheels. And that means wherever we tilt it, it's always getting driven by the wheel which is on the output from the cycloidal drive. But before we see how well that works, it's time for a quick ad from the video sponsor, which is Keeps. I've got lots of hair, but did you know that two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? The best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still have hair left. Keeps is a subscription service that makes it easier for men to treat their male pattern baldness online. The service offers automated shipping and delivery to your home. Keeps provides consultations and 24-7 access to a real doctor through online messaging for any questions or concerns and track progress with the Keeps tracking tool. Keeps is affordable, offering generic options for the FDA approved medications for hair loss. Prevention is key though, it takes around four to six months to start seeing results with Keeps treatments, so it's important to act fast. The sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you can save. Find out why Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors and why hundreds of thousands of men trust Keeps. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash Bruton or click the link in the description box to save 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Bruton. So now if I tilt the lever in one direction, we can vary the speed of the output wheel in one direction. It's declutched in the middle. And if I push it the other way, then the wheel goes in the other direction. The sphere is always spinning in the same direction, but a different side of it is running on the output wheel, and that means it can change direction. So that seems to be working pretty well. So to save me having to operate those manually, I'm using two servos, which are high-tech HS805BB pluses, and those fit in each side on a plate mounted on the top of the robot like so, with two levers, which are going to operate the main levers I've been operating manually so far. Now this is just a test to see how well these clutches work, so the whole thing looks pretty hacky like most of the other projects I've built recently. On the front we've got one 24 volt battery and we've got a VESC which is powering that cycloidal drive which is going to run pretty continuously while the robot's in use. On the other side we've got an Arduino Mega with the NRF24 LO1 radio receiver and a boost pack to power it, as well as a 5 volt regulator that's going to power those fairly hefty servos. I'm using my universal remote which came from OpenDog2 as usual, which has the other Arduino Mega and the other half of the NRF24LO1 link, which is going to read those knobs and send us the data. I thought varying the motor speed would be pretty handy, so I've coded it up so I can jog it up and down by twisting one of my remote sticks and change direction by twisting it in the other direction, and it goes up and down in quite good increments. So now I've just connected those servos to each stick so it'll steer like a tank, Remember they both move in the same direction to move forward and the opposite direction for it to turn. The servos seem substantial enough to move those clutches and continuously variable transmission balls. They are actually pretty stiff to move by hand so I wasn't sure how well it would work. But it seems to give us a good graduation of speed, we've got the dead spot and we can move in either direction pretty well. So now it's time to power it up on the floor and see how manoeuvrable it is and how well we can drive it, especially in a straight line.
That's actually pretty easy to drive and it's quite maneuverable as you can see. The only disadvantage is driving with two sticks. I really should have just driven it with one stick by pushing forward and backwards and left and right and made some code that mixes to put the servos in the right positions because it's quite hard to push them forward exactly at the same time in a straight line to drive in a perfectly straight line. But the clutches work and that's the main thing we wanted to test with this demo. The only slight issue is of course when we declutch the wheel can free wheel. So if I was moving and I declutch it still rolls. So to fix that, we'd really need a worm gear after the continuously variable transmission and clutch so that it can't back drive and it just locks. But that means we could have multiple clutches like this on one big drive shaft, perhaps with lots of wheels running and we could control a robot arm a bit like the 80s toy Armatron. And we could have lots of servo clutches all the way along and lots of gears or cable drive for something more elaborate. But I'm pretty happy with how that's gone and I'm going to publish all the CAD and code so you can find that link in the description to GitHub where you can find all my other open source projects. So if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, those links are in the description as well. And patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early and sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up so you can be part of that discussion. Alright, that's all for now.